massive hello to everybody. How are we all doing? Hope everybody's having a great weekend, wherever you may be, whatever you may be doing. So rocking and rolling here, 15th of uh, January, 2017. No trade calls, no recommendations, a response for the own stuff. We're here for educational purposes only. So reminder, U.S. markets close tomorrow, but uh, an interesting week coming up, right? So really, it's going to be uh, uh, maybe we can theme it Central Bank Week, right? We've got... Um, a lot of central bankers on board. So we got Carney speaking on uh, on Monday. We also got Theresa May speaking on Tuesday. On Wednesday, we've got basically the BOC. Um, we've also got Yellen speaking. On Thursday, we've got, you know, apart from the usual data, we've got the ECB to taper or not to taper. That is the question. And uh, we've got Yellen speaking again on Friday. So again, it'll be fairly interesting. It's all about this dollar, all about these equities. So we'll have to be uh, a little bit patient. So um, in terms of equities, right, we've been talking about this healthy correction, right? And um, I think anybody with a decent set of eyes looking at the market could only come to the same conclusion, and that's that there's uh, an underlying bid tone in the market, right? So we'll have to see how long it lasts, but you see that all these uh, dips keep on getting bought, right? No matter how weak the market may seem, the uh, NASDAQ very, very strong. NASDAQ clearly leading, um, ES somewhere in the middle, and Dow heaviest. And you see the markets had ample opportunity to uh, to smack, uh, get a smackdown, right? You see every time we try uh, coming towards those highs ahead of the 20K mark, you know, market keeps on getting smacked down, keeps on getting smacked down, but it keeps on finding a bid, right? So we still think that, you know, the 20K is not really doesn't have to happen. And we're very happy playing the short side. We've been extremely tactical here. You know, all this range, just selling here, trying to scalp into this area, covering some and trying to hold something for a bigger role. But, you know, it, it is what it is here. It's still holding some kind of a, of a bid tone. And you can see it on the ES2. You know, we had this big puke the other day and then all the way we still hold. So this is a classical situation where you'll probably hear me or other people say, uh, if the market fails, it has to fail from a higher level, right? But having said that, we still want to underline uh, the uh, the underlying theme that we're we're going with, and that is the market is not as strong as it looks, and that a lot is already priced in. And that we would uh, expect the healthy move to be the downside and especially the surprise move to come to the downside, especially in terms of velocity. Now, a lot of people are going to be talking about, is it just all about, oh, by the way, inauguration, right? Um, is it all about the inauguration? We have to go through that. We'll have a high volatility day. And then after the inauguration, we'll sell off a little bit. You know, we'll have to wait and see. That's earlier in the day on Friday. So it should be it should be interesting. But for now, um, as much as we'd like to uh, go on and on and on about it, not much has changed in the equities side, especially with uh, with respect to all the latest videos we've uh, we've discussed. Right. So in terms of the ZBs, you know, what's interesting here is we got this nice little correction we were looking for. Right. So that was uh, very nice. And the big question is here. Are we going to get this bigger correction, right? And we, we're still fairly bearish on bonds. You know, are we going to get that bigger correction, very aggressive uh, for the big move down? Or is this just going to be a shallow correction and we're going down from here? Yeah, that's that's the big question on the ZBs. And you can look at it in terms of the longer picture. Now, if you were to uh, flip over and look at something like the TLT, um, essentially just the ETF, but we have a different chart here. It just shows you how, how nicely, you know, the it played here on this channel, right? Moved very orderly, slowly trying to base, and then bam, we've broken higher. Now you see back into the 50, and it looks like it's trying to base. So the big question going into the week is, you know, if we get traction back below, that's where we would expect the move lower to continue with just the very shallow retracement. Now, if it catches a bid, then that's when we're looking at for that bigger picture move, a much bigger move higher, right? So that's what we're looking at in terms of the uh, of the ZBs. Now, in terms of uh, GC, so in terms of gold, we got that healthy little uh, correction we were looking for and we discussed last year. You know, well, we closed last year with... Uh, um, saying that basically, you know, we felt there was uh, there were a lot of interesting plays, and that was you know uh, the the correction higher on bonds, uh, short the dollar, long gold, 
right? And so all these things played out. So right now we're at a key key area, right, to see if these corrections are have just been minor or they're going to be a little these retracements are minor or they're going to be a little bit bigger, right? And what better week to decide that than on a week filled with central bank speakers and also the the inauguration of the president elect Trump, right? So right here big big moment of truth right here at the weekly, right, 50 is holding. We had a decent move here, you know, nice risk reward for a move up, you know, about 6.5 to the, to the upside. And here we'll have to see, this could easily correct all the way back up to the descending trend line and still hold bearish trend. So here we are for the week. We'd be looking at upside move back into 1280s and downside, you know, that the, the it's, this is still, this is still the fight zone, right? Doesn't have to get hit this week, but it's really pivotal. But the important thing is if we feel, if you're riding the longs off the end of last year for this correction, you know, it, it, it doesn't make sense not to take any profit. And by the way, um, as we discussed in the weeklies in detail, this is a very nice play on seasonals, a very nice play if you look at the way the um, gold reacted after the Fed meetings, you know, last one of the year going all the way back to, you know, even 2013, 2014, 2015, 2016, you know, very, very classical pattern paying out. So very high odds trade, very nice risk reward, you know, we really can't complain on this one. And again, just to finish off on on the on the equities, you know, if you look at the 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 YM, you know, everybody's getting hell bent on that uh, uh, where is it on that 20,000 but you're getting a decent reaction here right and as we said you know anything can happen but especially if you're trying to be tactical around this area selling it there's plenty of room to end up being wrong on this trade and still make a pretty decent return scalping it here you know selling 1850 and 850 covering uh, 800, you know, 50 pit scalps, you know, you had plenty of those last week, you know, and you're just working your position, trying to improve your break even. If the trade doesn't end up working, you could still be up on the trade, you know, with all the scalps, but this is clearly very interesting zone, right? And it's all gonna be about follow through, not about touching that 20K, it's about follow through above, right? Failure to get traction, but it's, it's a very interesting, uh, very interesting zone. And uh, in terms of the Euro, as we discuss, you know, that's the big question. Are we done with the with that healthy correction or not? And you know, with all this taper or not taper, we'll have to see the ECB has a chance to uh, to really move this right. And in terms of that healthy correction, you know, we've had a, a decent move off those lows. As we said, you know, we just really didn't understand how you'd get aggressively uh, short here. And we thought the you know there are a lot of risk reward to play for the upside. So here, I think it's uh, it's going to be up to uh, Mr. Draghi, right? You know. Um, Either the downside you'd have to watch very closely is going to be the 0450s, but clearly, you know, um, if the market likes what they hear, you know, there's there's a definitely stops above these highs that are going to attract. And if those get taken out, you know, all this confluence around this 09, 109, 110, that's going to come into play. So this is, uh, you know, right here, we feel there's very little edge here. This is going to be interesting for possible shorts higher up, interesting for possible longs further down. But right here, it feels, you know, doesn't look like there's an awful lot of edge. And and what is it going to be? It's the same thing with the, with the yen struggling off those highs from last year. It's the same thing with uh, uh, Aussie and Kiwi that are in those bigger um, retracement zones. Let's just look at the Aussie and Kiwi. Uh, quickly, if you look at something like, um, let's get on a, on a daily here. See, move back down, retracement back into Fib area, confluence with the moving averages, right? Is this going to uh, continue this whole action in trend, right? And move back down and get sold in this multi-confluence area to continue the move or is the dollar going to continue to get strong you know is are we going to see dollar strength or are we going to see dollar weakness right and it's ex exactly the same thing if you look at the um at the kiwi right kiwi very nice little attempt to get back and move lower is the dollar going to uh strengthen or is the kiwi going to strengthen right and you see we're familiar territory, FIB zone, confluence of these moving averages, same thing on CAD. So I think it's only fitting to get back and look at the 
DXY. And if you remember what we said in, in uh, at the beginning of the year when we were hovering above these highs, we said, you know, it, it, the, the, the picture, also the fundamental picture is for strength of the dollar. But, you know, if you're a betting man, you'd have to bet, you know, 100 prints before 105 when you're hovering around those 103s, not getting any traction. So a uh, fairly decent move right down there. You know, we didn't get quite to the 100, but that's good enough here. And this is the first retracement zone. So the question is, do you want, if you're trying to play dollar strength, as a lot of people who wrote in were asking is, you know, this is the first pray, place to try and get back long, right? This is the first aggressive place. You know, the thing to bear in mind is it doesn't mean you're not going to get other opportunities. It's, you know, it's reversed to that gold. This could easily come all the way back into the 99, 98 and still hold the uptrend. That's the big question. These are the areas that tend to catch a lot of people off guard, no matter what instrument you're lock looking at, right? When you've had a very, very strong move and then you start to have a little bit of a he healthy correction. Because on one side, people want to get, a, they want to get back in the move, especially if they missed it. And, but on the other side, they're kind of hesitating, right? Is this enough? Is it going to, re and, and the whole question is, you don't know, right? Nobody has a crystal ball. So we always feel the best thing to do is to keep things very, very simple with a kind of, if this level holds then this is likely to happen if this level breaks then this is most likely to happen so here on the chart what are the key areas to look at Well, clearly those recent highs that's resistance this is a first support zone if it can bounce then back up if it can't then we'd expect it to come down into the next level right and if it can bounce off that good if it can't then we'd expect it to come right back down just look at it as areas support resistances if it holds then it's likely you know go back up if it breaks likely it'll get some traction to the downside but in terms of the bigger picture if you look in terms of uh, rate differentials etc etc the story right now right here right now with the information we have is most likely that there'll be a lot of dollar buyers right and uh, chances are because of the strength of this move and if the fed delivers it, chances are you're not going to get a full retracement all the way back there chances are you're going to get a lot of buyers coming back inside this zone okay but if anything this is a fairly decent week where we could see some more things uh some light being shed on on the issues and again don't uh underestimate the potential impact of a friday um with the inauguration we'll have to see what happens but again we really can't complain uh whether you like uh the new president-elect or not we've got some um action we've got some move, movement on on the twitter feeds and we've got some movement in the markets and that's all we can ask for in terms of traders and it looks like there are also some bigger trends shaping up so again i hope this was useful thank you so much for all the guys who keep on sharing retweeting liking the stuff it's very much appreciated and again uh hit me up on twitter if you want me to post any chart have a great one thank you for flying with 50 take care guys bye bye